do you really need 10 barbecue grills or smokers? How about 20? How about 30? I've had at least 30 in my lineup at different times in my lifetime. Now they've all been very special in one way or another, different sizes, shapes, and colors. So in this video, I thought I would share with you guys all the grills and the smokers that I currently have in my backyard right now. Now this whole thought process came about because I'm trying to whittle down my inventory and sell a few of them. I just don't have the space that I used to have before, but it's really hard to let any of them go. So I thought I'd share with you guys a short rundown of everything that I have. I also want to share with you all a little bit about how each of them work in case you're interested in one of these styles at some point in time let's fire it up the most iconic grill in the history of the world <laughs> i'm gonna call it that the weber kettle i'm also gonna say this is probably the most versatile cooker on the planet this is probably my favorite go-to grill in the backyard for just quick and easy cooking if I'm doing steaks or fajitas or some kind of chops or something like that. This particular model does have a gauge that comes with it. They are notoriously not accurate that they have this extra little wire here on the side or, or bar where you can kind of just put your lid down. That allows you to work on here and your meats and do whatever you want. It opens up from both sides so you can kind of poke your fire, add a couple of wood chunks, add more charcoal, uh, whatever it is that you want to do with it. Now as far as exhaust goes on these particular models, they come with this little twist top here. So this is actually how you can control your heat on the Weber kettles through the exhaust. Now you can also control the heat from the bottom. All right, now this is the grate that comes with it for the, your charcoal grate on the bottom. And as you can see, I was cooking with this one not too long ago, so it still has some charcoal in there. But if you look at it, look at the size of the inlets here versus the outlets here, really has a lot more air potential coming in than going out. All you need is about a quarter inch of air inlet on each of these right here. That's pretty much where I run it 99% of the time. Uh, and then I just control the heat up on the top, the airflow on the top. Let me show you guys another little kettle. Basically it's a mini me of the uh, Weber kettle. And I will tell you, this will hold two halves of five pound, five and a half pound birds. I have cooked competition chickens here at the house with just a little bit of charcoal. They turned out fantastic. One of the cool things about these is that they will cook for a long time. If you just know how to control the airflow and don't allow too much air, you can fill it up halfway full of charcoal and still run it 300 and indirect. This is the original PK grill. This is probably the coolest, lightest, easiest to use steak cooker, fajita cooker. These have taken the steak competitions by storm. It is the number one choice of most steak cookers. One of the cool things about the PK, the, this is the exhaust vents here. It has four holes, plenty of exhaust, you know, for running a nice hot fire. Half of the grate opens up so that you can play with fire the way I like to do. You can add more charcoal, poke at the wood, or add some chunks. Now, very similar to these vents here, it has the exact same thing on the bottom. So you can see these little vents open and close here. That controls your airflow. So what I've done a lot of times, if I've got meat cooking on this side, I'll just close this up and only run air on here and then run the exhaust over on this side. So you have convection going in there and it makes it easy to control the heat. If you don't have enough heat, you can open up both vents and you can also crack the bottom here on this side also. So basically you put your fire tray back in, put your grate back on, and we are ready to cook. This also comes standard with an extra little high rise grate, but basically that's it. The PK grill, super light, super easy to move around. Really, really cool little grill, awesome little grill. It's aluminum, gonna last forever. You can give it to your kids, they can give it to their kids and their great grandkids. It'll last forever because of that, as long as it's well taken care of. I want to tell you guys a little bit about my stick burner here. This is a 24 by 48 inch Lone Star Grills. Let's start on the back here where the firebox is. Now this particular Lone Star Grill uh, comes with a liftable lid on the back. The idea behind this design on a firebox is that if you're not smoking and you want to grill some steaks or fajitas or whatever, put a fire down there in the bottom and then you can grill right here on top. I don't use it for that purpose. Obviously I have lots of other grills if I want to grill something quick and easy. It does come with two slide out grates on, on each door and uh, they do slide out easy. They're definitely well made, good, heavy duty construction. And so I got it to where the heat comes up, bounces off the deflector, goes straight across over here to the exhaust. 
There's the exhaust. It's right about the middle of the grate, which is perfect. That is a good design there as well. Now the exhaust comes out through here and it has this little swivel handle here where the lid opens up here on top and that allows the heat to escape. The inlet is down here in the bottom. You can see that this, this, this slides this way and this way about four inches there, three and a half, three to four inches of air. Um, it's generally gonna run right around there. So it runs pretty good. And I generally run wide open up here at the stack. Anyway, that's my stick burner that I currently have. I cooked for, I think three years on the competition trail with two of these. And I was able to cook briskets, pork butts, chickens, all on two hasty bakes. I've had this grill since 2015. It's been used a lot. These are black on black on the inside. They come with two removable grills. I really like that feature because if I want to mess with my fire from the top here, I can just slide this over and jack with my fire, or I can open the door on the side over here and do the same. We have a side door, really, really cool feature. Uh, what it also has, and these are the air inlets. It has five little holes here. So your fire doesn't really ever get out of control. I generally run mine about halfway open here. Really cool feature of the Hasty Bakes is that they have the fire tray goes up and down. So if you're running low on fire um, or if you're grilling steaks, you can get it up here really close. You can cook hot fast. Also, the fire tray is removable. Now this basket is extra. I fabricated that, it does not come with that. Uh, really holds a lot of heat and lasts for a very, very long time. I'm gonna show you guys the ideal way to run the Hasty Bake. Generally for me, it's usually about two inches off of the bottom, inch and a half or two right around there. That's it. And these are your exhaust vents. It has three. It's not one single long one like on the other end. This one, this one allows you, this one is for the little drip rail. So if you want to run that, you can keep it open. This is my favorite one. I've had the big ones. I've had the Ranger, had a couple other ones. This is the one I like. It's the do-all grill, best bang for the buck. Uh, in my opinion, as I've said many, many times before. The lid is super lightweight. It's all stainless. But basically this is your round grill, uh, very similar to a Weber kettle style. It has this deflector plate. The fire is exactly in the middle. And then it has all these perforated holes where the heat comes out. This, this is the fire pit, so you get a fire going here. It has a nice big hopper, and because it's such an efficient uh, grill, you don't need 20 or 30 pounds at a time. But generally, I can get three cooks out of, out of one hopper. It has the controls up here on the front. Uh, basically, you turn it on, and that thing comes on. You set it at 300 degrees, and in about five minutes, you are ready to cook. But uh, basically, that's it. It's a pretty simple design. It has wheels. It's fairly lightweight, easy to move around. It's very simple. It has these vents back here in the back. Um, and those help the heat escape. So that is your exhaust system. The heat comes out, it goes all the way around, halfway around to the other side. All right, let's start back here. Let's take a quick look at this big old hopper. This has a full length hopper, almost the full length of the grill. And it has a, a divider here in the middle which separates your pellets. So you can see the design here, how all the pellets will go right down here to the middle, down into the hopper for the auger is, and it pushes it right out there into the um, Fire I love these horns. This is like really cool feature to it. The 700 is identical. You just don't have this extra rack. Uh, down here you have two racks instead of one. This comes with one. By the way, it also comes with a folding table, which folds right up like that. And once you remove that, you basically have the Rectech 700. It's exactly the same. It has one big long deflector plate here, which is easy to remove and take out here and clean. It has a super heavy duty uh, deflector that sits in there. It's kind of a horseshoe uh, style design. Those pellet grills go down through that uh, chute. They come through here with the auger and land right in here. So you have a nice little fire pot right here in the middle and it heats up all the way. And of course the heat comes around the back and it comes around the front. Uh, that's pretty standard on, on most all horizontal style pellet grills except for the Yoder. The controls here are really easy to use. You pretty much just have an on and off button. In about five or eight minutes, we are already cooking. It gets hot quick and fast. These are the three drums that I own. This one here is a James Brooks drum. It's a no frills, just very, very basic drum. This is a twisted J drum with a little extra accessories. It also came with a nice little rolling card here. And then this is a Stephen Powell Texas Ugly Drum Smokers drum. This has a little bit extra fancy stuff. This has 
the little pig and the cow. It has a side door. Don't have anything inside this drum right this moment. It has a deflector that can set down here or a second grate if you want to cook closer to the fire on a low fire. And then the top grate sits right here where this one's at. Now this has a side door that latches closed, makes it really easy to kind of gauge your fire. The cool thing about this, that deflector I was telling you about goes right here, so it's very easy to slide in a water tray. Now this exhaust is a little bit longer than the other one. Not much, maybe about a half an inch, but they're very, very close. Now these are screwed on also. I'm gonna open up this twisted J drum here. Now this will fit over here on this one here as well, just to give you the idea uh, and demonstrate that they're pretty much are all the same size. Now this is a Weber kettle grill. This is my personal preference. I like to have a little extra airflow all around the meat and I like to have that little extra heat. This is a square basket. Doesn't hold quite as much charcoal as the round design. So this will hold a lot of charcoal. They will generally run anywhere from 18 to 24 hours. Some of them claim to run longer. Most of the time when I run a drum, I'm gonna run about half to three to a quarter inch open on both of the intakes and anywhere from halfway fully open on the exhaust, which is up here on the lid, especially on the drums. Because you have so much charcoal down there, you don't want too much air because then you're gonna run at 450, 500 degrees and burn your meats up. This is a mini drum, if you wanna call it that. It's known as the pit barrel cooker or the PBC. This is a marmoleo grill. Now this comes out of Monterrey, Mexico. It's more of a hanging meat cooker and I'll show you guys that in just a moment. All right, let's pop the lid off of the pit barrel cooker and uh, it only comes with one grate, which is what I use to cook my chickens. Most of the time at competition, if I have a pit barrel with me, that's what I'm gonna do with it. It also comes with a nice little round basket, which is not too big, but this is big enough. If you put enough, it'll run for a pretty good six hours without any problems at all. I bought these little magnets to control the airflow. You can see these here. Tone down some of my heat coming out of the exhaust. Then, because these are your exhaust holes, then I'll just kind of slow it down by doing that. Intake on the pit barrel is way down here in the bottom, but basically that's how it works. This is where the inlet comes in of air. The only downside to this is that if it's real windy and you're in a dusty area, it does suck up some dirt and dust through there. That's the pit barrel. This is the marmoleo grill. Really a cool, cool little cooker if you like. If you're into hanging meats, it comes with several little hooks that you use to hang your meat. You could literally hang about 12 racks of ribs in here and get them all cooked at the same time. Now this is not removable, but this opens up so that you can get your meats in here and hang them. You know, you can put these hooks in here, either this way or this way, whichever way you like. And if you want to grill something uh, or just have something small that you want to put up here, you could just stick it in here and put the lid on it. This is your exhaust, so you can open and close it from there. The whole barrel comes off and you put your fire in there and light it up. All right, friends, so that's your pit barrel. And that's your marmoleo grill, two very similar uh, barrels in size with very different personalities. All right, my barbecue loving friend, those are all the grills and smokers that I currently own at this time. I've also recently really enjoyed cooking over live fire, which is a passion with which I started with a long time ago. I currently own two live fire grills, which is the Pro Pit Bullet you see back here, and a Magnum, which is the big one you've seen me cooking on a couple of times. I've enjoyed cooking over live fire so much recently that I'm recording a video specifically about how to cook over live fire and give you some tips, tricks, and techniques to help you cook over live fire if you decide to buy a live fire grill. Now that's coming real soon. But in the meantime, if you have any questions about the grills, the smokers that you see in this video, ask me a question in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer you. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Ring the bell so you don't miss any videos from Arnie Tech. That's it for today, folks. Keep the smoke light and make it work. Boom!